Hey, what's up YouTube? Audio Jake here bringing you another video. And this one is on my favorite premium light tank, the HWK30. This beautiful German tier eight premium light tank sitting right in front of you on the sandy beaches here. Overlooking some cool views. Nice bar that I wish I was at having a drink. All right, so what is the HWK30? Well, it is a versatile tier eight German premium light tank. It's very good for crewing up your light tank crews. As you can see here, I have my RU251 crew in this thing. Very good for earning credits, earning very high amounts of experience for your crews. And it's just a very versatile, fun light tank to play. It's got a good gun, got hyper view range. So we're going to go over some statistics. Then I have two replays I want to show you because I'm recording this video really late on the North American side. And the servers, well, there's hardly anybody on the servers, so I would show you some gameplay just straight up from the from the client, but we're probably going to get matched in some pretty bad matchmaking. So I do have two videos. One of them does uh, show you the hyper view range, the gun handling, you know, a little a little bit about the gun, and then the other replay is an actual bad matchup where I'm bottom tier versus tier tens and tier nines. But I show you that the tank can still be effective in that replay. Uh, also, World of Tanks has some cool uh, content coming. So if we take a look at the tech tree, yeah, I'm just going to be a small plug here. The Italian side. It's going to start here at the P26-40. It's going to branch out into a new branch. There's going to be a brand new tech tree coming. Italian tank destroyers. And I tried them on the super test, and they were a lot of fun. They start out kind of like a backline sniper type uh, TDs, but then they kind of evolve into these like brawling TDs you know, with good armor and decent guns. And they do have the auto reloader that you're you're used to with the Italian tanks. Um, and I think they're pretty balanced. The tier 10 might be a little overtuned, but I think Wargaming will take care of that before they release it to the live servers. So when those come out, I will do reviews on my channel of that tech tree. Very excited about it. It's gonna bring some new content to my channel. So let's go ahead and get into this. Let's do look at some statistics of the Hawk 30. Let's take a look. If we can go to Tanks GG and we can go compare and we can add in here light tank. Let's do Germany. Let's do the HWK 30. And let's, hmm, what should we? Well, let's compare it just to the regular tech tree, the HWK 12. Uh, the HWK 12, if we go tech tree, we go Germany. And we take a look at this guy right here. This is the regular tier eight light tank that you will encounter when you go down the light tank line for Germany. You're gonna encounter this little guy, the HWK-12. And unfortunately for you, you're gonna have to grind through that thing as it's not a whole lot of fun for a couple of reasons, which is why this light tank, premium, is my favorite. So let's go over some statistics here. All right, so the HWK-30 versus the HWK-12. DPM, pretty much on par with each other. You got 2,000 DPM in the HWK-30, 1910 for the 12. Uh, Penetration-wise on your standard rounds, 187 to 180. That's pretty good. Uh, it's decent for both. Let's see, rate of fire, you're slightly better on your HWK-30. A 90 millimeter caliber gun is on both tanks. Shell velocity for standard rounds, 1,080. That is very nice shell velocity for the HWK-30. Absolutely abysmal for the HWK 12, though. 630, that is just awful, folks. Ooh, that is bad. I don't know why Wargaming continues to do that to certain tanks. What happens if we switch to the premium round, which is heat for both tanks? Well, 250 penetration, that's good for both. Again, Wargaming, ooh, 630 again on the HWK 12. That is awful. I don't know why Wargaming is keeping it that way. It's just terrible. Oddly enough, the HWK-30's shell velocity has actually increased on its heat rounds. Wow, 1145. Those are fantastic heat rounds. Mm, keep that in mind. So gun handling wise, they're pretty much similar. A little bit better aim time on the HWK-12. You're going to have slightly worse dispersion though while you're moving and you're turning, turning your tank and your turret. Both tanks though get 10 degrees of gun depression, which is lovely. Speed-wise, the HWK-30 comes out ahead. Five uh, kilometers more on your top speed, so 70 versus 65. Reverse speed, mm, fairly similar. Engine power, you got 
much more engine power on the HWK30, but you're a lot heavier. So your 28 ton tank compared to the 12.5 tons that the HWK12 is. So the HWK12 gonna have a much better power to weight ratio, and it does look like it has better terrain resistance as, as well. But the HWK30, as you're gonna see in gameplay, gets around pretty, pretty fairly well. Armor-wise, don't worry about armor. Neither of these tanks have it. You get 50 more hit points on the HWK30. Camo-wise, they're very similar, although the HWK12, even though it sits a little bit taller, it does get slightly better camo at stationary and a moving. So keep that in mind. View range-wise, both tanks have excellent view range at 410 meters base. That is fantastic. That means on your second setup, you can do like what I've done on a second setup here. You click on right there. I have virtually a gun loadout essentially because I have vents, I have a rammer, and I have coded optics and I have vent purge. This is more gearing the tank towards setting up it as a comp more of like a combat capacity essentially. We look at cost. Uh, the HWK30 is going to cost you 5,800 gold. You cannot buy this tank with credits, so you're going to have to go tech tree. You go down, boom, it's right here, the HWK30. It's going to cost you 5,800 gold. You obtain gold by using real life money to purchase gold. And if you go down to the HWK12, it's going to cost you 2.4 million credits. So, what are the. I'm just curious. Let's see what the standard round cost is on the rounds. 390 versus 315, uh, that is very negligible. That is nothing. That's. That's great. So you're gonna make credits if you fire standard rounds. Fortunately, you're probably gonna have to fire a lot of heat if you're bottom tier, facing tier nines and tier tens. But one unique thing about the HWK30 that I found, that's actually very unique, and I think it shares it with the M41 uh, Bulldog, the German version, not the American, is take a look at the high explosive rounds 102 millimeters of penetration, 320 damage. That's fantastic. Shell velocity is pretty good too, 755 for a high explosive shell. So these are fantastic, fantastic high explosive rounds. Mm, take, take quite a bit of those like I do. I take 10. And as you can see in the gameplay I'm about to show you, I heavily utilize them. So my standard setup though, on the HWK30 is I like to set it up for like hyper view range. So I have a commander's vision system in the uh, vision slot, basically a scouting slot. Unfortunately, the firepower slot is not utilized because I'm using coded optics for hyper view range and I'm using a low noise exhaust system to get better camo. So my camouflage is roughly about 38%, not bad. And for spotting, 520 meters view range, hyper view range. So not bad at all. Let's go ahead and exit so I can show you the replays. Let's get into it. So the first replay here is on El Haluf. And I wanna show you the basically the gun power and also some of the hyper view range. This first replay is actually illustrates both. Second replay, remember the second replay I'm gonna show is a bottom tier one where facing tier 10s and tier nine tanks. I just wanna show you that the tank can be still useful against higher tier tanks. Like I said, I apologize for having to rope into a replay. Um, I would edit this all out, but the editor I'm using currently has been giving me some issues the last couple of days that I've tried it. So I might have to switch to a different editor. So just bear with me on this video. All right, we're on El Halu. Matchup looks pretty good. About a 50-50 on both sides. I like matchups like this. As you can see, I do use XBM. Some people don't like it. I actually like it. But some people, some people are kind of hate it. So normally light tanks like to dive into that G67 area. I typically don't like going there. That would be this area here on the map, the one I'm kind of highlighting. 
I like to come to the C45 area, especially if I have hyper view range and decent enough camo. Because as you can see here, I'm just going to poke. Typically, there's TDs and that's, but yep, there you go. I found one. I found a wall off Panzer IV. I should have fired there. I didn't. But I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There you go. I was waiting for somebody to, to deck him. And I have a high explosive round loaded. 272. Not bad. Kind of a low roll for high explosive round. I tried to put another one in. Mm, that one just missed. T103 on the other side. I don't get the spotting for that, unfortunately. I switch back over to standard rounds. Now I'm going to start poking up here. Quick check to make sure heavies aren't going into that alcove right there because they'll come up behind you and start flanking you. And this right here, as you can see, is going to be a little strange. So yeah, the Basante is upside down and the ELC even 90. I'm going to get the spotting for that. Yes, 441. So I've already got a spotter medal. <laughs> But check this out. Yeah, the ESL even 90 is trying to help him. <laughs> high explosive round into him. 342 damage. That's a damn good high explosive round. T103 doesn't have a shot on me. I'm going to switch my angle here. I get a little bit more spotting on him. But this is interesting. I may have been able to fire high explosive rounds here, but I'm just going to fire standard rounds because I want to make sure I go through the Bisante's armor. He's just kind of in this weird spot. Now I want to put one more in, but I got spotted, so I start to reverse. And something just... This is just weird. This ELC even 90 is able to come in here and put three rounds into me. And unfortunately, my round doesn't track him. I was hoping that would track. It doesn't. So I'm going to eat three rounds. And then my teammates, unfortunately, oh, he got away with it. That is just, mm, that chaps me. So I took a blind fire there. I don't think I was spotted. I think that was just a blind shot from the object 907. And here I'm trying to get up, but don't have quite enough engine power. The 907 gets spotted. Get a little bit of revenge on him. And already, you know, combined, we have 3,500. I got 1,500 damage. I got a, I haven't secured a kill yet, but I have 2,000 spotting. Not bad. Just by trying to be patient here in the center. Just trying to work these uh, ridges. Trying to be patient. Here I didn't want to move forward because, yeah, that it, just what happened to that T-54 lightweight. There's still TDs in a dangerous position. Here I have a shot. There we go on the Scorpion G. Not bad. Take him out. Secure a kill. T-32 is about to get bombarded by my teammates, so he's going to be out. So now I decide, okay, we can move up. We can be a little bit more aggressive here, or at least try to. Although I am a one-shot. I only have 150 hit points left. Little peek there, no TDs. I was hoping to catch that Konzapont 50T. I was hoping to catch him there, but didn't. And yep, no TDs right there. That's that's a typical TD spot. So just trying to be careful not to crest this ridge too early. Here I'm just going to creep. And yep, there you go. There's two of them. I get spotted, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. 
Unfortunately, the Artie just missed him. That would have been nice if he had slam dunked him. Oh, but I got the spotting there. Scorpion G shuts, shuts down the T-103. I know there's another TD back there. There's one more because I know once... Oh, there he is, the Scorpion G. I knew there was one more back there. Because I already knew where the T-28 prototype is. Okay, I have a high explosive round loaded. And I know I'm not spotted anymore. There we go, 309. Very nice, very nice alpha on those high explosive rounds. Scorpion's out, so I go ahead and progress. And here, whoops. Tank has got a mind of its own. <laughs> I'm hoping I can secure one more kill, maybe put another round into this Consapon 50T. 128 hit points. Possibly should have loaded a high explosive round here, but I try a standard round. The standard round just bounces. That's my bad. I may have been able to secure a kill there with the high explosive round. But there we are. HWK30. El Haluf. Not bad. 1988 damage. Secured a kill. 2338 spotting. I will take that every day in the HWK30. So I got one more replay to show you which is perfect because this video is coming up on 20 minutes here. And this is going to be on the map Germany. And I wanted to show this replay because um, the HWK-30 being a tier 8, you're going to face a lot of tier 9s and you're going to get into some tier 10 matchups as well. And this replay is one of those where you're bottom tier, so you have to kind of be careful. And I just want to show you that the tank is capable of being in these bottom tiered matchups and still be somewhat effective. Now you're not going to have some sort of ridiculous game unless the you know the player skill on the other side is is woefully awful. And as you can see here, they're they're not great on the other team, but they're not. I would I wouldn't say they're terrible, <laughs> um, but they are on the little on the lower side. As where on my side, eh, we're a little bit better stacked on the skill wise, according to XVM. But this is a bottom tier matchup. This map is Berlin, and I just kind of want to show you how effective you can be in this tank. And as you noticed, I did click over to my secondary uh, setup, which I drop. The um, low, ignos, low, low exhaust system, I dropped that, and I also dropped the commander's vision system. Because this is a very small map, as you can see. So my view range is still very good, because I have 410 meters base. See, I've spotted out the two, T49 and the WZ132. I don't necessarily need the camo. I missed that shot, unfortunately. So I picked the setup that's more geared towards uh, gun power. Spotted out the MX-30. I was hoping for some shots here, but unfortunately it doesn't look like there's a whole lot. So I'm just going to be very patient here in the middle. Because I don't want to go over to the JK line and fight mediums that are hold down. I don't want to do that. There's not a whole lot going on in the heavy line either. I was hoping maybe a shot in a window or something. No, nah, not a whole lot going on there. If you're wondering why I'm not getting on the cap, uh, there's really no reason to. I mean, the cap points would be nice, sure, but there's there's really not a reason to when I can work this bridge. And you'll start to see here in just a second that I noticed that the char future force start moving up okay now we can start putting this gun to use make sure I get a little bit more range so my camo stays nice stays nice 
Need him to back up just just a touch. There we go. Very good accuracy there. 209. That's a, that's a little bit of a low roll. Got one more for you. 246. Better roll. Can't fire high explosive rounds at these guys. I'm not confident that the high explosive rounds would uh would penetrate them. Got spotted there because of the T49, not because of the Char Future Fours. This round I think goes into the concrete because I wasn't exactly sure where that round went. This one sells over the top, just barely. So we're down about 1600 hit points and three tanks. So not looking good for our team right now. But I am providing spotting and I'm providing uh, firepower in the middle of the map. So I'm being a, a good nuisance here. I should have fired there. I should have. I should have just took that shot because the chart future four is not going to spot me. So you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I should have fired there. He's moving off. But our team is starting to come back though. We're now up. You know, now we're we're even with tanks, and now we're up fourteen hundred points. And here, I notice oh, heavies. Up, oh, 50 B coming around. Good hit, good hit. Got another round for him. And a secure kill. Nice. I'm gonna have a hard time penetrating that guy. Yep. Switch to heat rounds. Heat round coming up. Very nice, into the lower plate of the TS5. Very nice. Up to 1200 damage. Not very much spotting, though, only 375. That's kind of disappointing. But no more shots on the heavies. Here again, I'm just I'm just trying to be patient. Just trying to be patient. I noticed the WZ-132 has kind of isolated himself. He doesn't have any, really any support. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and secure a kill here. And the Scorpion G actually firing an HE round at me did less damage <laughs> by him doing that. He must have splashed it on my tracks is what I'm thinking. Artillery, dodge that one. Oh man, I was stunned so that's probably why I missed that. That would have been nice to really hit that uh, high explosive round. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. We're going to go on to win this, and there's not a whole lot much more I'm able to do. Um, but I just wanted to highlight, basically, that the HWK-30 can be a successful light tank, even in a very poor matchup. Uh, you know, bottom tier, these are tier 9, tier 10 tanks, essentially. It's, a tier, it's basically a tier 10 matchup. But I did put, manage to put out, you know... Uh, 1500 damage not bad secured two kills 300 only 392 spotting I'm a little disappointed about that I, I try and aim for at least a spotter medal every single time I take this tank out um, but hey I'll take it especially in a bottom tier matchup well thanks for watching we're at 23 minutes I don't want to go very much longer than this uh, thank you for watching like and subscribe truly appreciate it let me know in the comment section if you like these type of videos if they're helpful or if you're interested in World of Tanks at all. Uh, I may have some World of Warcraft coming to my channel uh, just because uh, I've started playing a little bit more towards the end here because all the patches have been released and Dragonflight looks like it's going to be actually pretty cool. Uh, so I may get back into World of Warcraft. I may not. I'm not sure. Um, I actually may also have a Black Desert Online video coming uh, just because I occasionally play Black Desert Online. I like the life skilling of it. It's pretty it's pretty chill. It's kind of cool to sit back and just do some life scaling in that game. When, especially after I've had a rough session on World of Tanks because you can get pretty tilt playing World of Tanks. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, I uh, hope you like the video. Please like and subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing. This is Audio Jake signing off. See you guys.